GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers. My name is Max Olo Subwatin, aka Max Billion of K9 Extra Malkumase, Ghana. And this is GA Dog TV. Keep watching. Thank you. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gonna live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm bad. I just wanna get caught up in this life. I'm crazy, I'm bad. Doing no cap. Only God wants you better go live it up. Cash in the bag, stadium pack. Baby, I'm bad. Yeah. Baby, I'm bad. I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back, I'll be swinging hard till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me, ain't nobody like that I ain't gonna wait, that's all fact, give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back I'm sick of being cautious, I'ma go cause some pain, can't stop this I'ma steal everybody's lane, call a shoplift, sick of hearing everyone complain when they thoughtless Place the pain, it's like candy canes, it makes me go change it Having trouble dealing with ticks, mites, and fleas infestations on your dogs? Use Bravecto Chew. Just give your dog one tasty soft Bravecto Chew and they will be free from ticks, mites, and fleas for 12 good weeks. Visit any pet shop near you and grab a pack of Bravecto Chew now. For wholesale and retail, contact 0243-554-612. Remember, Bravecto Chew may be used in pregnant, breeding and lactating dogs as well as puppies from 8 weeks of age. Bravecto Chew, your perfect solution to all ticks, fleas and mite infestations. Welcome back from that quick break. Woo! Dog lovers, I'm sure you're loving this GSD right here. Now, welcome back from that quick break. But then before I introduce my guest for today's show, let me acknowledge our proud sponsors, Josira Pet Food. Josira Pet Food, the pet food with a passion. They have dog food for every dog at every stage of life. You want a dog food for puppies, pregnant dog, adult dogs, just link up with them. Go to any pet shop and get a product from Josira Pet Food or pick their contact details on our screen. Pick their contact details on our screen and trust me, you're going to love it. Very, very nutritious. Yes, very, very nutritious. They come with a wide range of products ranging from sauces of different varieties. Trust me, different flavors. Go visit any pet shop, yes, and get Josira dog food. And trust me, you are going to love it. Proudly made in Germany. And they've even got food for diet-sensitive dogs, yes, which are grain-free and hypoallergenic. And then I also like us to also appreciate our proud sponsor, Bravecto Chew. Bravecto Chew. You know, with our dogs, one thing that really bothers our dogs the most are ticks mites and fleas yeah so if you're having any problems with ticks mites and fleas then right here i've got the perfect solution for you go to any pet shop near you or pick the contact details on our screen and just give one tasty soft chew of bravecto to your dogs and trust me they'll be free from ticks mites and fleas for 12 good weeks yes and you can give it to breeding dogs lactating pregnant dogs as well as puppies from eight weeks of age now dog lovers allow me to introduce my guest for today's show today on the show i'm visiting the noel kennel the noel kennel and i have the boss man right here boss man welcome to the show thank you thank you it's great having you on the show as again yeah i i think we've been postponing everything for some time now but today i'm available to meet you so i'm very glad to meet you today and i hope we have a wonderful day for sure for sure and my i think my dog lovers have already started checking out these beautiful dogs we are having right here i think the last time was at the uh, the octagon cup the dog show yes the last time and i think the first time we actually met too was at the beach the show at the beach yeah 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 we met at the beach i was with break then we met at the beach and i think we had just a wonderful day he asked me some questions and i think i opened up to you to just tell you the challenges and everything we are facing as dog breeders and i hope we'll do more 
to bring out the best quality breeds in Ghana. Sure, for sure for sure and i'm sure by the end of this interview my viewers are really going to learn a lot and they are really going to enjoy everything as well on that day at the beach i was amazed having such a beautiful one of the finest dobermans <laughs> break wow it was it was really really great yeah some people see you and they 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 just get shocked that we have a doberman that's as huge as break some even call him the horse so if you call me by the name Break, they don't even know my name. They just call me Break. So I feel Break has really done a lot in Ghana, and everyone can testify to that. And I'm very glad to be the owner of Break. Thank you. Fantastic. So now talking about name, let me allow you to introduce yourself formally to my dog lovers. Okay, I think most of the viewers don't know my actual name. My name is Emmanuel Simonsa. Yeah, the CEO of the Noir Kennel. Basically, more people call me Break. More people say my contact as Break. But I have no problem. Because sometimes you come to the house, they, they visit and they knock at the gates. And when someone comes up, I'm looking for Break. And it's so funny. But at the end of the day, we know whom they are looking for. The dog man. <laughs> so basically, that's, with it. that's it with uh, the Noir Kennel. I'm the man here. <laughs> So nice, so nice, so nice. So if I'm getting a war, that is where the name actually came from. Emmanuel then Noel. Yeah, when I was in school, uh, major okay, majority of people call me Manuel. So getting into be there, I just decided, okay, they know me as Manuel. So for me to get the publicity and everything, I have to keep something that will still bring me like get close to the name Manuel. So I just decided, okay, let me just make it the Noel Kennel. So the Noah is, Noah is basically part of my name, Emmanuel. So that's how I, I came with the name, the Noah Kennel. Nice one, the Noah Kennel. And dog lovers, the location of this kennel is Kuntunse in the greater Accra region of Ghana. Kuntunse in the greater Accra region of Ghana. Now, Bosman, let's, let's build it up. How did your love for dog start up? How did the whole thing start? What a question. <laughs> okay, so I'll take you back to Bema Camp. My dad was in the military. So during my days in Bema Camp as a small boy, like a young boy, I used to see the military police with dogs. He used to take me around that side. But there's one thing in Bema Camp, you can't own a dog because most of the houses there are not gated. So basically if you have a dog, if your dog goes out, there's this rule, the military police go around and they catch them. So, I used to worry my daddy, I wanted a dog. <laughs> but he used to tell me, well, how, where am I going to keep the dog? The dog is not going to have anywhere to sleep. Like, the house is not gated. And it's Bema camp. People are going to complain. There will be, the Provo Masha will come in a whole lot. So, when he says that, I'll be sad. I'll go to bed. Then... Later, I will come up again. Until one day, I was there. I started with a local dog. A local dog. Like, my daddy didn't want to buy at that time. So, my first dog was a local dog. Someone just dashed it to me because of my love. I used to go to their house to just go and see their puppies. He gave birth. So, I used to go there, sit with this dog, sit on the floor. My sister would come. She shouts at me. She scold me and all those stuff. But I just made them understand. I like dogs. I like dogs. I really want to have a dog. I really, really. So this woman gave me the local dog. I used to keep this dog at the porch. I used to, let me, let me see. I sleep with it at the porch. Like, I wouldn't like to eat. When they give me food, I'll go and give it to this dog. And my father would be watching me in a different way. And he's just so amazed. This guy really, like, I like dogs. So... Until then, I raised this dog. It gave uh, a litter for the first time, and at that time, I was I was in school. I was in the boarding school. So when I came back, my sister who didn't like the dogs. I'm um, um, sorry to catch you, but then if I'm getting it well, you were in your teenage years. Wow. So um, my sister who didn't like dogs. Later, when this dog littered, she started giving me feedback when I get home. I go back home from school and i realized the dog littered um eight and because 
she didn't like it but she had to just do it because i'll cry and i told them if they don't if they kill their dog i won't learn if my father wants me to be first in class he has to, he has to just make sure this dog is alive like they shouldn't hurt the dog and all this stuff so i realized when i got back home the puppies were all good apparently my sister had dashed joy for pizza <laughs> so later on, my dad came to understand i had the love for the dogs and if he gets me a dog it's going to be motivate me to learn more so my father got me we, we had um a uh, uh, Boabu Jack. So Jack, I realized Jack was lovely. Jack was always by my side. Jack was very popular and all those stuff in the area. But people started complaining. So it didn't make me take the breeding, like as in think of doing breeding, because I just wanted this as a pet. So I used to visit my friend, um, he was called Lester. They were living at Cantonment then. So they had five dogs. So because of their dogs, let me say Lester was my good friend. Very good friend. I loved you just for just for their dogs. So I used to visit their house. They had five strong dogs. And some you, you could see their traits. Some were very proud, some were not friendly, some were on and off. You can't predict them. They can bite you at any time. So I started learning something from them until i got to the university so when i got to the university i was doing internship then then the money they used to give me since i was sitting from the house i was just saving so basically i always everything i want i ask my father for him to buy because i don't want to touch my money so you ask me i ask my sisters they will be giving me the money. When they give me, I ask for sneakers. I say I want the money to go and buy sneakers, but I'm going to buy the sneakers. And I know if they are, if they are supposed to watch this video, I think they are going to hear a lot of <laughs> secrets. Because I used to call my daddy. I, I ran out of food stuffs. I ran out of this. I always a lie. Because I really, really wanted to add up just to buy a dog. So <laughs> if my father is listening to me, he should just forgive me. <laughs> I just wanted to be a breeder. One, like I just wanted to own a dog myself. So these were some of the things I used to do. I used to lie just to get money, just to buy a dog. So my first my first dog was like as in my first dog I'll say I bought myself was in twenty fifteen was a boabu. Mm -hmm. It was called Sasha. Uh, may her soul rest in perfect peace. It was a female. So I had added up money and I got this friend who told me he could give me a babu. The babu was very nice. So he apparently gave it to me 1005 then. So I bought the dog. I was left with feeding. The, you know the cost of feed in Ghana. But still I was I was very eager to do this i was ready i was ready to just go the extra mile just to feed this dog and i'll say it on your sh on your tv today that some people as i feel maybe i was supported by my family or my sisters or my father no no one supported me it's not like they wouldn't have i wanted to do it on my own i wanted to have this confidence i can do it without my parents without anyone so everything you are seeing today is from my pocket and i'm very glad and i'm very happy to call myself a breeder because looking at where i started from doing this alone even though my family initially didn't like it because they thought uh, the cost of feeding dogs was very expensive i just wanted to prove to them that even without them, I can't do it. And in anything, you have to be determined. So I'll say everything I've, I've done today was all out of determination. I just had to cut certain things off just to make sure I achieve what I want to achieve. And I'm very proud of myself today. And they are the ones who even call me that they have bias for me. They have this. And sometimes they are surprised with the way they hear my name outside. 
uh, we learn to have the best government meal in Ghana, uh, break his doors. Like, they even hype me more than I hype myself. And I feel proud. And I'll say, breeding has done a lot for me. Now, so you've gotten, let me pick it up from where you got the Boa Bull in 2015. Now, you've gotten the Boa Bull and also at which point did it set in? At which point did you um, say that, okay, right now I want to start breeding. I'm not going to be just a pet owner. At which point and what motivated you to start dog breeding as well? Okay, so when I got my Boa Bull, I then I then got to understand um the difference that I was own, I was having a pure breed, not a pedigree. That I didn't have the documents of my dog and everything. So I met this wonderful man called Ni Ni Anan. Wherever he is, I would like to say a very big thank you to him because he enlightened me more. Everything I know today, I would say majority of them I owe it to him. I owe it to him, and I just came to understand that the dog I was owning, uh, owning was a pure breed, so I had to do more to have a pedigree. And you know, importing a pedigree is very expensive, so this is like hard work. I had to do extra, extra work, but I wasn't. Um, I, I I still had the confidence I was going to do it. I still had the confidence that I can do it. So I felt, okay, I do internship, uh, I get money. Okay, so now I have a boa boo. So what is next? Okay, the, the limits right now is to have a pedigree, is to do more. So in the process of having this boa boo, I, I got sad one day because I got back home and my dog was dead. And you could just imagine how I got the money to buy this dog and me going down the scratch like to start again but I, I still had the confidence I'll do it so I had to start all over again I had to um, do more so somewhere let's go back somewhere 2016 almost 2017 I got my Doberman that is break the break came in the picture. Um, how I got break, <laughs> only God knows. <laughs> only God knows. It was, it was a funny bargain. It was a funny bargain. Like you have a dog, but you're owing somebody. <laughs> that kind of thing. And you know, what I realized at a point was, it's a dog. It can die. And I still have to pay the money. But I feel it was out of trust. It was out of um, truth. I got back. Yes, a story I always say when I tell people they get shocked because getting break was like I trust you. I want to sell this dog to you. This people have been in breeding at that time. But they never got a chance to have a dog like that. But for you to just meet somebody and out of trust, a person wants to sell this dog to you. I felt I was blessed. I felt I was meant to be a breeder. Because at that point, I was so happy. Even though I wasn't done paying the money. <laughs> even though I wasn't done with my part of the bargain. But the person trusted me and he told me, Fakrama and Oko. As we, as we have discussed, I trust you. I know you pay back my money. So I got break for like six months. I would say I was partially owning break because I wasn't that paying. And you know, I have to pay, feed the dog, pedigree. I have to buy a whole lot. But God being so good, break became a blessing. Break made me enter places where I, I wouldn't have entered even in suit or tie and I was very glad I was very glad that this dog was an opener to whatever I wanted to achieve in breeding so that was when I had my true love for Doberman because um, I had a couple of other pure breeds but 
um, I had GSD, Islands it was pure bead at that time. I had a Boabu, I had a Rosala. But after I got break, I realized the double man is different from all this beat. And looking at when you used to hear um in Krama we on back and cry only too friendly with Enkora. And at that point I was leaving like, I was living with my sister when they were kids. But having break I realized um that perception was wrong. Cause Dobermans are even though they are very fierce and manipulating, they are um like family guard dogs. Family guard dogs. They sit well with the family, the kids, everyone. Those who are scared of dogs can start with the Doberman and I think they will come out giving maximum testimonies because always I hear testimonies. Always you have you get a call and you hear my because of my Doberman people don't even want to use my lane. There were those uh, rowdy boys around my area, they don't want to so I feel they are the best of beasts. Me, me that is what I thought they were to go for. Buy a double man and thank me later. <laughs> nice one, dog lovers. I'm right here with the boss of the Noir Kennel. And you can tell from the way he's speaking that he's a big enthusiast of the double man breed. Now, dog lovers, we'll get to my favorite part very soon where we check out some of the dogs at the Noir Kennel. And then we check out their names and everything but then let me acknowledge our proud sponsors yes this episode was proudly sponsored by Josira pet food Josira pet food the pet food with the passion the pet food with the passion you have dogs puppies come on go to any pet shop pick the contact details on our screen and link up get Josira pet food yes any product from Josira pet food they've got dog food they even have cat feed as well so just link up with them they have food for every dog at every stage of life puppy adult pregnant and they even have dog food for diet sensitive dogs which are grain free and hypoallergenic so just pick their contact details on our screen pick it up give them a call or get into any pet shop and get any product from Josira pet food and then we are also sponsored by Bravecto Chew Bravecto Chew your number one solution to all ticks fleas and mites infestations you see ticks on your dogs ticks fleas mites just go to any pet shop get Bravecto Chew Bravecto Chew they have the products according to the weight of the dogs so every dog and the um the product you can get for him or her so go to any pet shop get bravec to chew pick it up very tasty give it to your dogs and they will be free from ticks mites and flea infestations for 12 good weeks and then you can also give it to pregnant breeding and lactating dogs as well as puppies from eight weeks of age now let me get to the the, the, the boss man right here the boss man of the noir kennel i'm really loving the story from where he built it up and all of that so now um let's get to this part um let's share some challenges of dog breeding as you mentioned earlier when i can see that it hasn't been easy at all because you said you did everything together financially getting to the technical aspects and everything the feeding and everything can you share with us some of the challenges of dog breeding so far okay so um uh, since i started dog breeding there's one thing i always tell people that these are animals they're like human beings so you can wake up and one would not be feeling well or you can wake up to see one dead what are you going to do about it one of my <laughs> one of my worst challenge was um Importing a dog, two dogs to Ghana, and they all died within a week. Yeah, I, <laughs> it was something I kept to myself, like as my as my own thing. I have imported a dog; the dogs are dead. You see, if you are not determined, things like this come into your head. Okay, I could have used the money to buy a land. I could have used the money to buy a car. I could have used the money to buy this. I could have used the money to buy this. But I felt that really strengthened me at that time. 
that really really strengthened me because i felt i had really gone the extra mile to work very hard to put up this money to just do this importation and everything and the door comes and within a week they are all gone uh, I, I was really it, it really hit me that hard but that's one challenge i feel you should understand before you start reading because as i said you can wake up and you, you can just wake up and you're no more you're gone it's the same as these dogs they and with them they can't even tell you um my head is aching my leg is aching so basically all the time you have to give them 100 percent attention it's not easy especially combining work with breathing but i always say once you are determined you should know what you are going in for another challenge with these dogs is you're a business person coming dealing with people is very hard especially their clientele your clientele some people will come ask you um, excuse me to say some unnecessary questions like you the person will call you i want that i want to that's i want to cross my dog a person knowing less about the thing will come like me me they make my bro or barney bro no so maybe just a me to a bear man if you don't really know much about business i feel you get you get upset you might end up um, destroying your brand sometimes you have to have patience because um, in the human resource world like you when you are dealing with people you won't get them in the same level though so you have people being positive people being negative so sometimes you just have to be you have patience you just have to remember the brand there's a brand you are building aside everything you want to sell yourself outside if you don't take care of these people would tarnish your image with just maybe a text a whatsapp text or anything and we are still on human with humans i realized they will come to you i won't start i don't have money there's this thing we call in breeding puppy deals having break i've had several puppy deals the worst puppy deal i had that always haunts me is doing a puppy deal for somebody who i charged even with the puppy deal the agreements the part payments you're supposed to give to me he didn't give me that part payment told me when he gets home he's going to send it to me he never did this dog comes up this dog latest 18 18 puppies he just lost one 17 this man didn't even think of it that i'm going to come back and show appreciation or anything he sold all the 17 without giving me my money till now and it's, it's, it's really a challenge especially with the line aspect where you sit in your house you, somebody wants to do business with you and you send your uh, pictures of your dog and the person tells you the dog is not for you because somebody is using your picture to market his dogs that's one big challenge like i feel it's a big challenge like the lies the deceit is really bad that's on human but with these animals the challenges are something i always say i always say and laugh that whenever they get sick is the time that you don't have enough money when you have enough money you don't get you don't give you any stress but when you you feel you are down on cash you realize uh, um, there's this there's that there's this i brought a dog i brought a dog that was imported from russia the dog came together within three years the dog hadn't littered before i didn't give him birth before i crossed the puppies will come out all dead ask me why they all died because the dog was suffering from candidiasis is what we call white so dogs also suffer from the sickness we human beings also suffer from so this dog will later and they will all die this dog will later and you, you can just imagine the headache because you bought a dog you paid an, a, an amount you have to make sure you get your principal but for like three to four years you don't have your principal and you are still in business so there are the human challenges there are just the dogs challenges 
there are sometimes you bring dogs, they can't even do start. They are impotent. Let me make it clear so that the general public will understand that they are impotent. They can't do like do start and a whole lot. And there's backbiting in the business. Once you are doing well, you know, even I always say Jesus Christ, people didn't even like him. So as a human, you should just understand that. But there's also another challenge. I feel if we are all supposed to come together and do the right thing, we are all going to head towards the right course, like take the breeding to a different level where the foreigners would rather be important dogs from our end, not we important from their end. So these are basically the key challenges as and all would come up to finance. Sometimes uh, it becomes so challenging because as, as I said earlier, they are dogs, they can't your pup, your dog can litter. You can lose all the puppies, not because of your negligence, but because of things like powerful. Like it, it can happen at any time. So finance is sometimes a challenge. But that one, I feel, you are in business, and sometimes you have to structure things in a way that you have to be ready for everything. I mean, I feel the building, you have to be ready in terms of finance. Have a backup plan or anything. You have to just be ready for whatever you have entered into. And another thing about the general, this is like a general problem, like with the clientele. You see, I just want to make the world understand that we are in a modernized world now where machines are working and all those stuff. You have somebody call you for start that is crossing and you tell the person go and do a progesterone test. Just progesterone test makes you know the exact time to cross the female. This makes it very easier. This makes you not know, use your um, male too much because if you know, if you do a progesterone test, you're going to understand the exact time to cross your dog. Unlike first, we have to do four times crossing, miss a day, and all those stuff. With progesterone, you can just do it twice. So you save the male the energy. But people come and they are just looking at, at money. When you are into breeding, forget about the money. Because you know you know what you entered, if you really understand what you are doing. So if you want the best, you have to spend more. Even in our normal life, if you want the best, you pay extra. But if the general public comes to understand this, I think it's going to help all of us. That is basically the key challenges I, I've had with breeding dog lovers you, you you heard it from the boss man and i'm sure you're you're really learning a lot from this episode as well today the current location is the noel kennel at kuntunse in the greater accra region of ghana now boss man we'll be, we'll be wrapping up the interview very soon and then we'll be checking out some of the dogs right here at the noel kennel but then um from our earlier conversation you mentioned that you are a hard time or should i say a big lover of the doberman breed but today i see you with a german shepherd here and i think i've spotted another german shepherd around too for me i know that you're a doberman person so coming here to see the germans i'm like wow so well what, what changed bro yeah i knew i knew this question was going to come up <laughs> oh okay so um I would say I don't like the other beats. I like the other beats, but I, I call I, I call the German Shepherd the Doberman's closest friend because they have the same traits. But the love for GSD initially was for my dad, but I didn't follow my father uh, because he he wasn't like he didn't want to buy me that dog, so <laughs> I just didn't want to mind him. But I. Um, the laugh came when I met um, K9 Palace Kennel. I would say K9 Palace Kennel is a brother, as a partner, full time partner. We want to do extra. We feel like uh, breeding, collaborating with somebody, a key person or a determined person, you can do more. We've seen people do it. And I just want to tell the world we are coming out big. 
and we have something coming up and very soon you visit again and we are going to take you to a wonderful location where you just be wild so that was when the gsd came in so now let's say together with Kena, we are doing dobermans and gsd and i love them yeah, as i said they are similar to the doberman so i feel there's no challenge even with the kids in the house so everything i said about the doberman the gsd is also a perfect perfect to that now boss man we are about to get to my favorite part where we check out the names of the dogs and everything no but then before somebody is, has been watching us and the person is just waiting for you to drop out your contact details social media handle so that they can just link up with you so i'd like you to drop it out and then after that you say your final message okay so i'm on ig as then no kennel then no underscore kennel that is t-h-e-n-u-e-l underscore kennel k-e-n-n-e-l and my contact is 0 or 0 you can reach me on any whether whatsapp or normal call now boss man before we get to my favorite part, i'd like you to say your final words it can be a message and advice to upcoming breeders fellow breeders anything okay all i all i'll just tell my lovely viewers and my um fellow breeders is yes it's business and sometimes um, it can hit you hard it can hit you. like it will be good it will be positive like it will be positive it will be negative but no matter what you just don't have to relent on the on the good actors of breeding you just have to make sure that you do the right thing no matter what and always don't forget to always give thanks to god and leave everything to god because wherever you have got to in life no matter what is because of god so we shouldn't just relent on our prayers because i feel when we get to a certain stage we feel um, we've got there so you can come down anything can happen as i always say so all i'll say is we should just give thanks to god and make sure make sure we give our tight as well because i know what tight has really done for me and I'm very happy and I feel everything, the knowledge, the dogs, the grace and everything is because of God. So breeders shouldn't relent, relent on the good ethics of breeding and they should just do the right thing. And let's leave everything to God because he's the center of everything and with him everything is possible. So thank you. Having trouble dealing with ticks, mites, and fleas infestations on your dogs? Use Bravecto Chew. Just give your dog one tasty soft Bravecto Chew and they will be free from ticks, mites, and fleas for 12 good weeks. Visit any pet shop near you and grab a pack of Bravecto Chew now. For wholesale and retail, contact 0243-554-612. Remember, Bravecto Chew may be used in pregnant, breeding and lactating dogs as well as puppies from 8 weeks of age. Bravecto Chew, your perfect solution to all ticks, fleas and mite infestations. Okay, so we are at my favorite part where we check out some of the dogs at the Noel Kennel. Yes and in case you want to link up with the new kennel his contact details are on the screen link up with him give him a call what's up link up link up link up now boss man let's start with the double man first can you can you tell us something about this lovely girl here this lovely girl i call her my queen <laughs> she's a pride of russia that's what i call her she's called kim from the zonenberg bloodline from russia she's um good like almost five years should be five this year a lovely thick double man you can check out the paws and everything and um, she's she's very lovely she's let me say she's my favorite female my best dog you already know already is break but this is the madam of the house 
nice one, dog lovers. Now let's check out the madame of the house right here. Kim right there at the Noel Kennel. Very beautiful female right here. Female Doberman right here at the Noel Kennel. Wow, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and then we have the, 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 the next dog we are introducing here to Bossman. What about this beauty here? Mm, he's called Falcon. Seven months old. You can see. Wow, seven months old. It's just seven months. It's just seven months. It's still a puppy. Seven months old from Ukraine. Wow. Wow. Dog lovers, check out this. Seven months old puppy. Wow. I, I, I love this boy. Yeah, he's going to come out big and very soon he's going to be a top star. So we just, we, the, the general public should just be ready for this top boy and we are going to give our massive puppies. You can see it for yourself. It's just seven months old. Seven months old Falcon. What do you love about Falcon? Mm, Falcon with the hugs. Even though he'll just make your dress dirty, but like with the hugs is good. If you have dogs, you know, I would say dogs, uh, they reduce your pressure and everything. Sometimes you just have to be with them. Uh -huh. You know, you know that kind of thing. Power, love, affection. Falcon likes to be hugged. Falcon, Falcon, come, come, come. Uh -huh, you see that kind of thing yeah he wants to lick you and all those that your, your cheeks and all those stuff so that's what i like about falcon falcon is just a lovely boy and i can't wait to just start calling you guys to bring your females for falcon to do justice to it that's one dog lover check out falcon right there very beautiful seven month old german shepherd over here wow such a beautiful boy right here at the noel kennel Woo. okay so we have another german shepherd here too boss man can you can you tell us something about this girl here too um her name is Belva. six months old yeah you, you can see it already she's very dominant um the the father is from poland and the mother is from Serbia. She's the daughter of Gomez. You already know Gomez. She was born and bred in Ghana. So this one is a product from Ghana. We didn't import it. It's a product from Ghana. So we should be proud of what we have here. So as I was saying, we can do better. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Dog lovers, check out this beautiful six-month-old puppy right here. Wow, 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 wow. Just, just check it out. Very beautiful. Born and bred in Ghana. Born and bred in Ghana nice one boss man so this is the last dog we'll be we'll be we'll be showing at the noel kennel this is the last dog and i'm sure dog lovers you you, you just love the scenes right here with the dogs and all of that so this is where we'll be bringing today's episode to an end today we visited the noel kennel and the location the location is kuntusi in the greater accra region of ghana in case you want to link up with gh dog tv pick the contact details on our screen 055-328-4056 055-328-4056 and then you also follow us on all of our social media handles on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok at gh dog blogger if you are new on our channel you kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content this episode was proudly sponsored by Josira Pet Food, the pet food with a passion. I've told you over and over again, if, you've have, if you have dogs, you're looking for dog food, just link up with them. Their contact details are on our screen. Give them a call. Go to any pet shop. Get a product from Josira Pet Food. And trust me, they've got pet food for every stage, every stage of life for every dog, adult, puppies they've got sauces with different flavors trust me they've got food for diet sensitive dogs as well which are grain free and hypoallergenic and then we're also proudly sponsored by bravecto chew bravecto chew your number one solution to all ticks fleas and mice infestations your dogs are infested by ticks fleas mites trust me Go to any pet shop or pick the contact details on our screen. Buy one tasty soft chew 
of Bravecto, give it to your dog and I know you are going to testify. After giving it to your dog, they will be free from ticks, mites and fleas infestations for 12 good weeks. 12 good weeks and you can give it to pregnant bitches, lactating dogs and puppies from 8 weeks of age. Dog lovers, this is where we'll be bringing today's episode to an end. My name is Solo One, you can call me the dog blogger. Catch you another time. GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers.